This is Genshin Impact, and as this video goes live, it's mere days away from a global release. And those of you who have heard of it have very likely felt the hype around it. Among certain circles of gamers, this is the big, fat, moist, delicious news of much excitement. For those of you who haven't heard of it yet, you probably take a glance at it and recognize it as yet another in a recent bleeding edge of the incoming tidal wave of games heavily inspired by Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because it has been exactly long enough since that game launched and became a massive global hit that every other game developer out there who wanted to go, hey, me too, has had time to develop the game by now. So we've got this, we've got that one from Ubisoft, there's a fistful of others on their way. But this... This isn't that, or at least it isn't just that. Comparisons to Breath of the Wild will be unavoidable as it's clearly inspired by it, but it's more than just a simple copycat, clone, or knockoff. But what this game is, is an anime-styled, full-length, single-player, action-combat RPG with a roster of different characters, all with different personalities, combat styles, weapons, and special abilities with which to build a four-person team from, all while fighting, exploring, dungeon-crawling, puzzle-solving your way around a stunningly pretty and richly detailed open-world map, which, by most estimations, based on the size of the two regions available in the beta tests of the expected five regions in its launch state will be at least two to three times the size of Breath of the Wild's map. And as a cherry on top of all of that, it's free to play. And it's coming not just to PC, which is the gameplay you're looking at here, but it's also coming to PS4. And it's coming to iPhone, and iPad, and Android. And although not at launch, it will eventually make its way to the Nintendo Switch as well. But I have a serious warning for PS4 players, but I'll come back to that later. I'll just leave that dangling here for now, but you know. Uh, suffice to say, Sony is being kind of Sony about things. But what we have here in Genshin Impact might just be a figurative and literal game changer in the industry when it comes to free-to-play games, when it comes to gacha games. Hello again, I am Blunty, and if you're not too distracted by the waifus and husbandos bouncing around on screen in their glorious costumes and wonderful weapons, I'd very much appreciate your help in fighting the toughest world boss there is, the YouTube algorithm. We must band together to defeat it. Lend me your energy. Hit that thumb, smack the sub button, special attack with the bell, and trigger your ultimate with a comment. So... Let's roll backwards just for a second. Many of you will know I'm not a huge fan of the way most free-to-play games are done. Some barely qualify as games at all, in my opinion, as an old-school gamer. Especially true of a lot of mobile gacha games with their insidious energy systems and autoplay mechanics and deeply disgusting psychological manipulations. And of course, I loathe that a lot of free-to-play microtransaction scams have infected full-price AAA titles from major publishers too, to such an extent that even the politicians are taking notice and trying to figure out if this qualifies as actual gambling and it should it be restricted and what it's doing to kids. But I'm not inherently against free-to-play games supporting themselves with microtransactions. There are some that are actually well done, done responsibly, and with respect to a player's intelligence and time and wallet. Dauntless is a good example in my mind. At no point in playing that game, and I have been playing this for years since it was in its earliest betas, at no point will you feel punished or limited or restricted for not continuously spending. And when you do spend in order to support the game you're enjoying so much, it feels like a fair system with good rewards. Which brings us back to Genshin Impact. It's an open world ARPG and it is fully realized as that from the get-go. You can, from everything we have seen and know about the game so far through its betas, you can expect to play through the entirety of its story mode without spending a single cent and without feeling like you're missing out on something by not spending. The monetization is gacha style. For those unfamiliar with that term, it's a type of RNG loot box system. In this case, you'll be rolling for, or in the parlance of this game, wishing for characters and weapons. And you don't actually even need to rely on that. In the game, you'll get several very useful and powerful characters just through the story mode itself, and weapons get dropped from in-world loot chests and the like. You are not going to miss out on any content in the game by not spending to get special characters to unlock you know, special areas of the map or something. And there are no dungeons or puzzles that can't be solved with the free-to-play provided characters, stuff like that. 
getting copies of characters you've already unlocked through this system goes towards boosting that character you've already unlocked, and undesirable weapons can be fed into boosting other weapons. The in-game currency for making these wishes can also be earned in-game through normal gameplay, through questing, through side quests, through achievements, and at least in the early game, it is reasonably generous with the stuff. I expect it will slow down significantly as you get deeper into the game because that's just the way these games are designed to go. It's single player, which means you can go at your own pace. It's not a PvP game where your only options for keeping competitive are to spend or wail or dedicate your every waking moment to tediously grinding just to keep up with the pay to win players. And it's not even an MMO, which means you won't even see anyone else rolling around in your world with some kind of super rare special character or amazing weapon to trigger you into a feeling of FOMO or fear of missing out or jealousy or whatever to psychologically move you into spending. There is multiplayer, but it's optional and it's co-op and not linked to story or mission progress at all. You can explore, you can battle, you can do dungeons and stuff. So there is absolutely no core or gameplay inherent pressure for spending on MTX. No PvP, no competitive comparisons, no psychological triggering of me versus them and have versus have not. Like Dauntless, if you're enjoying the game and choose to spend real money, it seems like it'll feel clean. It seems like it'll feel like a choice and the rewards can certainly be nice. On my very first roll with the in-game provided currency for these wishes, I unlocked a very fun character indeed that I hope I get when the global launch comes. Called Razor, and he's super fun to play. Unlike Dauntless though, the rewards for playing are still RNG based though, and the drop rates for four and especially top tier five star characters and weapons are pretty damn low. But there is a pity system in the game. So once you've rolled a certain amount of times, uh, it will take pity on you and guarantee you a five star item or character. But if you do have a tendency to get carried away on these kinds of gambling mechanics, I'd be a little wary of falling into the trap of chasing this stuff. But as I said, you can earn the currency for wishes in game and it's reasonably generous in the opening acts to help ease you in, it'll give you some freebies. But there's also a battle pass type system as well, where for a certain period of time it will give you booster rewards and rare items on a level progression unlock system thing for normal progression, questing and regular gameplay. And that of course includes earning more currency for the gacha system of course. But overall, it seems like a very solid game made in the context of free to play games and gacha games, made with basically unheard of levels of care, passion, detail, competence and content. This, at least upon first blush, and let's be fair and realistic here, things could change down the line if they eventually start introducing more aggressive techniques. But at first sight, and at least at launch, and at least for the playthrough of the main story mission at launch, this could very well be the newest gold standard in how to do free-to-play games, how to do gacha games, without being an absolute Satan's taint scab about it. I'm enthusiastic, I'm encouraged, I'm hopeful about this game. And I can count the number of free to play and especially gacha games that I've been enthusiastic about on less than one hand. Now, outside of the monetization stuff, the gameplay loop itself feels genuinely great. Perhaps not quite as deep or sophisticated as Breath of the Wild when it comes to puzzles, at least from what I've seen so far, but the world design, the music, the characters, the story, the voice acting, the exploration, the crafting, the material gathering, the cooking, and everything around that really does feel very good very carefully thought out. There are certain characters you can unlock that give you sort of bonuses and when you're crafting certain things or, you know, there's characters that will make your cooking better and things like that. And there's a lot of sophistication and depth to it if you really want to dig into it, but you don't have to do that. And the combat, again, I'm only basing this on the first several hours, but it seems really good. It's simple on the surface. You've got your quick attacks, your hold attacks, your specials and your ultimates, but each character also has a weapon type of their own and an elemental power. And between the different characters and these combinations of different weapon types and different powers, the variations can be very compelling and fun. And where Breath of the Wild had the Sheikah Slate for special elemental stuff, where you had, you know, the freezing stuff or the bombs and all that kind of stuff, here you can kind of think of your team, your characters as the elemental abilities as a replacement for that. For example, you might have one character that can make the enemy have the wet effect. You can then switch to your ice user to freeze them solid. You can then switch to an electricity user to zap them. And this combination does a big, huge smack of bonus combo damage. There's another character who has a deployable bomb, a bit like the Zelda bomb. There's one who can heal the whole team. There's one who can deploy a shield that persists even after you switch away from her to another character. They still get the shield she triggered. The number of possible combinations and combat styles and play styles that this supports could be 
huge. Combine this with the fact that each character can have other special effects and passives, combined with each character having five slots for other passive boost and support gear for building into DPS or defense or extra elemental damage or higher criticals or any combination thereof. I'm telling you, the system here is a gold mine for people who love messing with the min-max builds and team combos and all without leaving the more casual player in the dust because you don't have to dig into these systems in a deep level if you don't want to. You can just use whatever feels right for you. Between the size of the world, the sophistication of the game, the stunning good looks of the game especially, character designs are gorgeous. I mean, if you're, if you're into your waifus and your husbando type games, you're going to be very excited about this because some of these characters are super kawaii. I'm very excited about all this. As I said, it's coming to PC, which can be considered the prime platform, but also iOS and Android for mobile and tablet. And this, by the way, is the game I mentioned in my Google Pixel 4a review video that I was anticipating so highly I asked Razer for a review sample of their Kishi gamepad. As before this, there's literally never been a game I wanted to play for any kind of extended period on mobile. But this game is compelling enough to make me want an actual controller for my mobile. Oh, and just a reminder, as I said near the opening, yes, it is confirmed for Nintendo Switch 2. It is absolutely 100% confirmed as coming to Nintendo Switch, just not at launch, and we don't have a specific date yet. Hopefully it's not too far away, though. And the game will be completely cross-play. So PC players, and mobile players, and eventually Switch players, and PS4 players can all co-op multiplayer together seamlessly. And better than that, it will be cross-save. So I can do my main gameplay and dungeons and, you know, all the tricky stuff and such on PC, but then switch over to mobile while chilling in front of the TV in the evenings and just do some exploration and simple material gathering or grinding or crafting or whatnot. But all this does bring us back to that PS4 warning I was telling you about. Because Sony are absolute shitlords, theirs is the only system that will not support cross-save. If you create an account on that system, then that system is the only place you'll be playing your save file from. No cross-platform save file for PlayStation players. So if you have any other option, I'd strongly suggest not playing this game on PlayStation, unless you're 100% okay with being restricted to that system only, being trapped on that one system only. Which, to be fair, some of you will be fine with. I'm just warning you about it so you don't get stung by going in blind to this nasty little Sony time bomb. The only other restriction will be regional servers. Your save file cannot be moved between servers. Although on PC, iOS and Android, you can choose your server region from the login screen, even outside of your actual geographic region. So very useful if you're planning to be playing with a group of friends, you can all get together and make sure you're all on the same server. But on PS4, the server region is set automatically based on your PSN accounts region. No choice. Because Sony are dickbags. So, aside from the Sony-enforced dickery, everything else about this game seems right on track to make it a solid experience. Gacha-obsessed players will find plenty of chase potential for the long haul here, as more characters and weapons and such are added over time. We don't know an awful lot about the endgame situation yet, but I'm sure that I'll be heavily leaning into that sort of stuff. While people determined to stay pure, free to play, or at least limit spending to much more moderate restriction, can simply play through the core story mode as you would any other open world action RPG, and then walk away from the endgame grind and loot chase, and move on to your next game. Genshin Impact seems set to join a very short list of free-to-play, MTX-supported and Battle Pass-supported games that I actually approve of. And more than that, making it an absolute unicorn of a game, it is the first game with a mobile port that I want to be playing, that I plan to be playing, that I expect to be playing, at least until the Switch version arrives and gives me a better handheld option. But what say you, loyal viewer who made their way all the way to the end here? Enticed? Eager? Gonna wail it and spend offensive amounts of money on gambling for pretender swords and waifus and husbandos? Or are you gonna stubbornly free-to-play it no matter what? Never spend a cent. Me? Based on first impressions, I think I'll do what I did with Dauntless. I'll mostly free-to-play, but if it sucks me in for a decent amount of genuinely fun gameplay, I'll be more than happy to spend an amount no greater than I'd expect to pay for it if it were a standalone purchasable game. 
And if it turns into a long-term game, as indeed Lawless did for me for many years, I'll pop in for the Battle Pass every now and again to continue my support of a fantastically fun game. I mean, fair's fair. Good work deserves support. This is what microtransaction free-to-play games should be about. Not tricking you into spending money, but asking you to reward them for making something worth paying for. Speaking of which, thanks as always to the glorious and kind and generous patrons whose every gesture of support gives me wings with which to glide, or at the very least, some food in my belly and my internet remaining on. Hooray! Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.